Have you guys heard about this? Um, Sean McDermott, three years ago, in a training camp speech, referenced 9-11 when trying to motivate his team to come together as a team and communicate. Mm -hmm. Sean McDermott essentially said, look at the terrorists on 9-11 who overcame incredible odds to come together and imagine the level of communication that was needed for them to pull this off. Like they can, they did some great thing and people are pissed. I would remind you, Sean McDermott is the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. Help me, Jake. Buffalo is in the state of Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Uh, by <laughs> Yeah, it's a bad look, dude. Did you have a brain freeze? I did. Buffalo is in the state of New York, and Sean McDermott claimed in his apology uh, that he had lost close friends on 9-11, to which I say, Sean, uh, this isn't really an apology at all. I want to reference um, the team meeting that has been brought up. Uh, my intent in the meeting that day was to discuss the importance of communication and being on the same page with the team. I regretted mentioning 9-11 in my message that day, and I immediately apologized to the team. Not only was 9-11 a horrific event in our country's history, but a day, but a day that I lost a good family friend. It was mentioning 9-11 in the context of um, the team meeting that was the goal of the team meeting was about the importance of communication and being on the same page as a team. I'm not here to, to discuss the, the article that's out there and the things that are mentioned other than this right here because this right here is very, very important to me. And um, something I take very seriously. Uh, well, apparently you didn't take it seriously enough in 2019 when you made these comments. It was so uncomfortable for the players. He asked, he started asking the players, well, what do you think? At the time, he said, what do you think their biggest obstacles to overcome were? There were several awkward answers until one player said uh, the TSA and the room broke out in laughter. To which Sean McDermott was supposedly not happy about. He claims that he knew he had done something wrong. So when the team gathered on the field for practice before practice started, he got them all together and apologized for this. Mm -hmm. To which I say too little too late. At some point, not only is your team very average and doesn't win big games, not only have you stagnated a quarterback and fired your offensive coordinator and scapegoated just about everybody but yourself, but if you're the Pagula family, how is this not the last straw for Sean McDermott? I feel passionately that the Buffalo Bills should fire Sean McDermott for this and many other things. Jake, am I right or wrong? I think you're you're right. I mean, I I, I think that you know this this season's been riddled with complaints and issues in terms of Josh Allen's performance and you know it, just the team's performance overall. And and I think now the problem for Sean is that that we no longer care about whether your team is good or not because you've given us something more. You you you've commented and tried to get your team, I guess, to come together by using one of the most horrific days in American history as the focal point. And I'm just here to say there are very few things that are pretty much untouchable in terms of what you're going to talk about publicly or, or in front of a group of people, right? 9-11 is definitely on that list. You do not talk about 9-11 uh, it really in any other capacity other than to, you know, to remember, right, to 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 cherish the life that was lost that day, to understand what happened that day. As an example, to talk to kids who were not alive during that time about that day. We, we don't need you trying to make light of how good the terrorists executed on their plan to fly buildings or to fly planes into buildings into the biggest city in our country. And then ask your players to give you examples of things they felt like the terrorists had to overcome to triumph. So so you're correct that because this happened, because they're in the state of New York and Buffalo, 
that this is a problem, but that's and this hardly makes the it biggest worse. problem. Yeah, I think it makes it worse. I think this is a problem in any NFL city. Agreed. Agreed. I think it makes it far more worse that you are that you're in Buffalo in New York, which I know you were unaware Buffalo's in right. New York. Yeah. Mm. Uh but you my know. point is I, I just I don't understand this. It, and it, I think it's something that's in our culture, and I don't know why that is. What was the thought process, Sean? Did you so did you wake up that day three years ago and you were like, all right. I need to, it's training camp. I need to emphasize communication and that, you know, communication is what's going to allow us to be successful as a football team, you know, as we move through the season. There's expectations. We got to make sure we're on the same page. So you thought it'd be a good idea as a, a to, to use an analogy that included the terrorists on 9-11? Like, what are we doing? What, what makes you think that that's a good idea? And this is why mm-hmm. I agree with you. He should be fired for this. I don't care if it happened yesterday. Or three years ago, dude. And I'm not a guy who's like, yeah, fire everybody. Burn the thing to the ground. But when it comes to Sean and 9-11, dude, I kind of think that's where we are. I kind of think that this is a cardinal sin that you cannot commit and hope to keep your, your job. And if they do keep him in the organization as a player, like Josh Allen as an example, I'd have a problem. I would have a problem because that represents you really badly. Yeah, I struggle with this thing also. And I want to play his comments again because I think this is important. I believe that anytime somebody says, well, you know, when I was talking about 9-11, I just got it wrong. And by the way, I lost people in 9-11 too. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. But the fact that you bring it up because you're trying to apologize and save your ass doesn't make me feel like, yeah, boy, you really have, you have a lot of respect for the sacrifice and the suffering of, of, 9-11 9-11 families who, you know, actually lost people on 9-11 and don't use it as a talking point in football meetings. I want to reference um, the team meeting that has been brought up. Uh, my intent in the meeting that day was to discuss the importance of communication and being on the same page with the team. I regretted mentioning 9-11 in my message that day and I immediately apologized to the team. Not only was 9-11 a horrific event in our country's history, but a day but a day that I lost a good family friend. It was mentioning 9-11 in the context of um, the team meeting that was, the goal of the team meeting was about the importance of communication and being on the same page as a team. I'm not here to- like the team of terrorists and they pulled it off unbelievably and man and and you guys did did you see the angle that the like you're an asshole that's what you are even in your apology you know i was talking about 9 11 in terms of the team and the awesome communication that that team of terrorists pulled off you're just fine dude the team there there is no awesomeness there is no greatness of execution it's ridiculous that you would bring up 9-11 to, to drive home the fact that great communication is possible amongst terrorism. How are, you, how are you not fired already? Sean, let me help you, dude. Let me let me make it really simple for you. Instead of coming out on the podium and saying, Man. this was the goal of the meeting, and it was about team, and it was about communication, and you know I lost people on 9-11 too. Instead of talking about all that, why don't you just come out and, and and keep it really simple? Just the same way you coach your team. Keep it simple. Hey, I should not have done what I did that day. I made a mistake and I'm really sorry for that. And and for those who I have offended with this with this mistake, I apologize. I should not have done that. And 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 it will not happen again. I assure you of that. Yeah. I, I I'm amazed by it. yes, Lopes fan Gabe, exactly right. Intent means nothing, you jag off. I, I mean Correct. Like you saying my intention was to talk about the team. Yeah, and their intention was <laughs> to fly planes into a building, dude. Which they thanks. did very well, and you drove that point home. Thanks, Thank you. Dude, thanks. Thank, like it's it's amazing to me. Um, you know, Sean Rollins says clearly cleaning his plate. Delaric, I was in the group he needs to go before this came out. Now he must go. How did you not fire him when this when this happened? Mm-hmm. You can't tell me the ownership group doesn't know That's about this. That's what I'm saying. If you're, again, not, not just Josh Allen alone, but because he's the quarterback. Like, if you're Josh Allen or any, 
you know, Diggs or whoever you want to point to, really any player on that roster, how are you not pissed about this? Man. How are you not just like, holy cow, like, you know, this thing got, you know, I guess covered up, if you will. It just wasn't a big story until it got brought up. And a news, uh, uh, there was coverage over this and the story was broken this week, which is why Sean McDermott said, I'm not here to talk about the specifics of your story. Mm. It's crazy to me. Uh, Tanner Plummer just read the exact comments from Sean. Awful look for him. D-Day would have been a better analogy for him to use. How about we stop using war and, and you know, days where thousands and tens of thousands of people lost their lives? I know. How about we don't do that? How about if you're so married to military analogies, I guess. Why don't you use one that puts us in a positive light? How about that? Just in a basic, like, I agree. Let's stop doing analogies where a ton of people die. Man. But but I just, I guess what I'm so, like, just shocked by is that you chose to talk about the terrorist when you so could have easily said, hey, on 9-11, on which I'm not advocating but for, but I, if you're going to do it. But I think we should not talk about 9-11 at all. We shouldn't. But I We just, shouldn't talk about World War II or Pearl Harbor or, like, I don't understand it. But every year on 9-11, when, when we remember, we always talk about, and, and I think it's just and we should, we always talk about the first responders and all the heroes of that day. The bravery. The bravery. The people the who died. I mean, you're talking about people who who got on like the firefighters got on a fire truck and drove up to uh, you know a hundred story building and ran into that thing while it was going to collapse. Do you like do you understand how much courage that takes? And then the people at Ground Zero who are who are dying from cancer and who right like <laughs> it, it talk about it on nine eleven with respect and admiration for people who truly served our country that day. Sean McDermott shouldn't be the head coach of the Buffalo Bills, period. And I'm tired of talking about, because this is not, this will not be the last time this comes up. It, it just won't. You guys know, I just, I don't believe in, I don't believe in praising war efforts. I don't believe, like you look around the globe, whether it's the Gaza Strip or, you know, any, any of these war-torn countries like Ukraine. There's no winner. You, you guys understand that. There's no winner when tens of thousands of people are dead. There's no winner on, on, on the beaches of Normandy. Did we triumph? We did. But how many of our, of our young men did not triumph that day? There's no winner. So when you're a football coach and you're praising terrorists who killed thousands of innocent people, I don't think that you truly grasp the scope of your responsibility. Should be fired immediately. It, it's On wild to me. On the spot. OG Gary, my Saints need to fire everyone and start over. Hopefully we get a top 10 pick. That's a rough sit. Derek Carr was a mistake. Derek Carr was a mistake. As Jimmy Garoppolo was a mistake in Las Vegas, Derek Carr was a mistake. And I just am, I'm amazed by it. I, I Yeah. Hmm. Um, Katie Rader gives us $9 and 11 cents. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. OG Gary, who's been a member for nine okay. months Let's go. on the show. Duke ain't Utah football. Appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the show. Gumby Fresh Out says laters. Uh, cause OG Gary's got to go see y'all later. Have a great weekend, everyone. You too, Gary. Always appreciate you being here, man. Uh, Gary Wolf, I mean, he's right. It did take a lot of planning coordination. Stop. Stop. Screw him. Screw him. I don't care what I, the, the terrorist to me, I'm not, yeah, no, I don't think I, I, I can't believe, <clears throat> I can't believe, and I rarely do this to listeners, but I can't believe you just said, Hey, this dude's right. Oh, well, he is technically right. I don't care if he's right or wrong. Yeah, I That's don't not what we're discussing, sir. Yeah. We're discussing how distasteful and how disrespectful it is to do that. And the fact that it, by anybody's standard, dude should be fired on the spot. No question yes, about it. St Stepanek. Why is it just being brought up now and not when it happened? Agreed. So so that's the other thing. So the organization was like, yeah, Sean's a really good head coach, so we're not going to fire him for this, and hopefully this doesn't come out. Is that what's going on here? It's wild. Joseph Harper, there is no winner in war. No, there's not. 
No, there's not. Um, real quick, before we rip the Chicago Bears, it is time to give away our $100 Amazon gift card. Uh-oh. Okay. Now, we had a lot of entries. We have a lot of people playing prize picks now. I appreciate everybody who plays prize picks with us. We love it. I think I think Daily Fantasy is one of the most enjoyable parts of my day. I mm -hmm. love it. I love playing prize picks. I hate losing at prize picks like I did last night because Anthony Davis is a, is a jag off, frankly. Um, you, you just one three. If he makes Happen one street clothes, Davis, just a late and he misses Jake over here texting me taunts. Oh boy. Too bad. He missed that layup. Huh? Fat ass. Hey, bud, maybe let's not air ball from 10 feet at the elbow, dude. Thanks if that shot, had, if that shot had gone in, I win. If Giannis didn't suck at free throws, I win. But they, <laughs> he does. I didn't win. It broke my four, three or four day winning streak on Prize Picks. Mm -hmm. um, I currently now have the most money in my Prize Picks account that I've ever had, mm -hmm. and I haven't made a deposit in two weeks, three weeks. No, more than that. It's already December eighth. Jeez, Louise! I haven't made a uh, a deposit in my Prize Picks account since October. Life is good. Mm -hmm. I love it. Download the app. Use the promo code Monty to get a hundred percent deposit matching from Prize Picks, um, or click the link in the description below. It'll embed the Monty code promo uh, in there for you, so you get a hundred percent deposit matching. Enter five, deposit five dollars, you get five dollars. Deposit a hundred, you get a hundred at PrizePicks.com. Uh, and now, I can't do it. Uh, Jake, who is our winner? Joseph Harper is our winner. Hey, Joseph, go, baby. Joseph Harper. Prolific there you go. Prize picker. Congratulations, Joseph Harper. Uh, Joseph, you just won a hundred dollar gift card. And I, I thank everybody, Harry Austin, everybody who entered. It was awesome to see. It's been awesome. A lot of people DM me for prize picks advice. Please feel free. Uh, you're better off DMing me on Instagram because I get so many DMs on That's Twitter. Cool, dude. It's why I, I just, or excuse me. X. Uh, I hate X, so I don't often get into the notifications or my DMs on X. Um, <laughs> in fact, I've not looked at my DMs on X in some time. Mm -hmm. I probably should. But yeah, if you guys want to talk prize picks, please do. Um, you're, you are very welcome to uh, DM me. I'm happy to uh, chat it up. So um, congratulations to Joseph Harper. Joseph Harper. He's please a, DM me. He's a 12er. Joseph Harper, you oh, just won. It is. It is. Yeah, that's disappointing. If if I'd have known that he wouldn't have won, but it's fine. Congratulations. Okay, who's somebody else that entered? Let's take the prize away from him. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, we're not making uh, and look at that. There he is. Joseph Harper says, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh hope Gino is a lifelong Seattle Seahawk quarterback for the next decade in mediocrity. That's bullshit. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't actually I just don't like Pete Carroll. He he yeah, to me chewer. he murders bazooka bubblegum, and it just I think it's it's unnecessary. Uh, Tuesday, we will give away another Amazon gift card on Giving Tuesday. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you who plays prize picks with us. Uh, Lopes fan Gabe, let me fix it for you. Imagine the level of communication and coordination that took place among the first responders on 9-11 to save as many lives as possible. Or let's not reference it at all. Exactly what I'm saying, dude. Thank you. Precisely. Exactly Precisely. right. Precisely. Sean Rollins says, uh, let's go, Joseph Harper, who says, thank you very much. Gumby Fresh Out, prize picker greater than nose picker. Yeah, Facts. booger eaters Facts. are not generally good fantasy players. Uh, okay, whoa, Dakota Tubbs. Uh, you want to talk about war, how about Army versus Navy? Well, there you go. Uh, James Knight, can you pass on my uh, donation to the advocates? Yes, we will, of course. Which, there it is right there. Uh, appreciate that. Yes. The advocates are trying to raise money, uh, for the, uh, homeless community that right now winter time is, is brutal mm -hmm. for, for the homeless community. I'll tell you one of the things that really struck me in Hawaii, uh, when we were there a couple of weeks ago for Thanksgiving is the massive amount of people. We were on a boat on a snorkel tour. And one of the ladies was like, man, it's so cool. People just camp on the beach. And the snorkel boat guy was like, hey, are you serious? Do you really think those people are living on the beach because they're tourists and it's just fun to camp on the beach? He's like, we have an economic problem in Hawaii. Those people can't afford to live anywhere else. So they're camping on the beach, not by a choice. Like it was wild. 
this I lady's can... like, oh, it's so cool that you can just camp on the beach. <laughs> Bro. You a, a quick funny Dude. story on that? We're snorkeling. And this lady just comes flying through the water and runs into my wife head first. Uncle real. While we're snorkeling. A, that's the same lady who made the, oh, it's so cool. You can just camp on the beach. <laughs> She also turned out, unbeknownst to us, to be right next to us at the resort. The room right next to us was the same lady who torpedoed us while snorkeling. Wow. Couldn't get away from her or her screaming child. 